my life experiences in the construction industry have afforded me a greater understanding and more importantly a greater appreciation for the health and safety sector. I believe that there are far too many parliamentarians with too narrow a perspective of the real world of work and that's why they often repeat the tired old mantra it's health and safety don't matter. But they all take health and safety for granted in their daily lives and perhaps wouldn't be so quick to dismiss health and safety if it was their children that were exposed to unsafe or dangerous conditions. But I don't suppose many of the government's multi-millionaire ministers will have children grafted for a living on Britain's building sites, for example. But this issue of health and safety is currently a political hot potato with the government looking to water down health and safety legislation. As someone who served as a city council in Liverpool on the football licensing route, I'm opposed, obviously, to any such moves. There's no more pertinent reminder of what can happen when sports grounds in the UK fall horribly short of safety regulations than on that darkest of beautiful spring days on the 15th of April 1989. A day so tragically awful that it's known simply by one word, Hillsborough. Following the totally avoidable deaths of 96 Liverpool fans, Lord Justice Taylor's final report addressed some of the recommendations first proposed in 1985 following the Bradford Fire disaster. It is ironic that if Lord Justice Popplewell had done his job properly, the tragic consequences of Hillsborough would have been avoided. Instead, he now chooses to slight from the sidelines, criticising the 22-year-long dignified campaign for justice by the families of the 96 victims. Whilst Taylor's interim report dealt with the causes of the disaster, the final report promoted the safety of spectators as being paramount, with its main tenant being the recommendation for all seater stadia. In the coming weeks, Parliament will debate standing in football. There are a minority within the parliamentary elite, backed by an equally small member, member of supporters' trusts, who believe standing should be reintroduced. And I stress they are only a minority, and long may they remain so. There shouldn't be any doubt about the way I feel on this issue, but let me make it perfectly clear. I am opposed to the return of standing at football matches, full stop. Some argue through rose to spectacles that bygone age when football was the preserve of the working classes, that some outstanding would amplify the rich, the atmosphere at games, whilst forgetting that during the good old days, the environment at certain stadiums could be pretty poisonous at times. Football has itself evolved and we shouldn't allow nostalgic romanticism to cloud the main issue and that is deaths and major accidents at football matches are at an all time low and we shouldn't endanger the progress that we've made on this issue to date. Later this year, after a 23 year wait will be then, we will see the report from the Hillary Independent Panel on what really happened the last time safety was compromised at the altar of ignorance and expediency. As we said, I was there on that day and that's what my Leppens Lane ticket for the North Sand just a few minutes before the kick-off, where I watched in horror as 96 innocent people were crushed to death because of dreadful mistakes by the police, ground staff and authorities charged with our safety. We must be under no illusions, this can never, ever be allowed to happen again. It is therefore important that organisations such as the IOS Sports Grounds and Events Committee <coughs> dedicate themselves to stadium safety and keeps a watching brief on attempts to relax thinking on this issue. For each of us, complacency is the enemy of safety. As politicians, we must recognise the need to support organisations such as yourselves. The Irish Sports Grounds and Safe and Events Group are a valuable addition to the sector to ensure public safety is paramount. It is of fundamental importance 
that the health and safety groups are taking a proactive approach in their relationship with the sport and safety authority to ensure that every new challenge that the industry faces is met and dealt with before serious incidents occur. Former past president John Bolton said that this group will provide a base for sharing experiences and best practice in sports safety management. I therefore welcome the launch of the IOS Sports Grounds and Events Group today. You are a very welcome addition to the health and safety sector at a time of real importance for the UK, both economically and in terms of our sporting and cultural offer. My hope is that we can work with partner organisations to continue the great work that has been done to keep people safe in our stadium.